being rolled out as we speak in Asia, so uh, it is real. So um, I've had a few. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Well, um, given the talks we had over lunchtime, I just uh, slightly, I'm slightly going to adapt my talk to it today. <laughs> I, I know sometimes it's not a good case, but let, let's see how it, how it works. So what I want to talk about is, uh, uh, as Paul mentioned, a real-world um, use case in the financial area, where we try new ways of uh, engaging um, uh, people uh, as part of the process. So we're going to see uh, how instant messaging, as a kind of a new channel into the process world, can actually help improve the user experience in, uh, in various processes and, and, and cases. And so what I'm uh, going to, to, to do is also um, give you insight behind the scenes, how we did use the global engines, uh, both uh, process and case engine, and even the, the, the DMM engine, to, to drive that uh, communication. But first, um, let me start with a statement that we have heard quite a bit uh, nowadays. Um, especially in Asia, that's also where um, the solution we're going to, to look at a little bit uh, was rolled out first. Um, they really have troubles um, connecting with clients over traditional channel like email. So um, especially in private banking, uh, people will tell the bank like, hey, if you want to reach out to me, use instant messaging. Uh, in, uh, in Asia, uh, it's, it's uh, a lot um, in WeChat. Uh, WhatsApp a little bit. In uh, Europe it's mainly um, WhatsApp, it's Line in, the, in Japan, it's Facebook Messenger uh, in, in, uh, in the United States, or iMessage, or, or even traditional SMS. Um, but simply email is, seems to be fading on a little bit uh, as, as a communication channel. So we thought, how would um, process or process interactions look like if we, have, if we add instant messaging as a channel uh, to the picture. So that's what I'm, what I'm going to uh, talk about um, in this uh, session. So here's the scenario that I'm using. Of course, some of the um, parts that we're going to see are the, the real ones, like the onboarding process. Uh, the other one, like the uh, address change, is a little bit simplified from a compliance point of view, because it will be too complex. Uh, to, to showcase uh, here. So what I'm going to show is um, a use case in private banking, high wealth clients, uh, talking to their personal uh, relation manager or client advisor in, inside the bank. And sometimes you need to do stuff, like uh, in our example, at first a pretty uh, a small or simple example, like changing the address. But in a financial institution, it's not that easy, especially if you do cross-country uh, move, if you move from country A to country B. <coughs> it depends on all the regulations, local regulations, whether that move is allowed, whether the bank is even allowed to continue, continue the relationship. So it's a lot of regulation and compliance issues there. So we need something like case uh, process behind the scenes to drive it. It's not just like simply filling out a new address form, done, right? Um, but it should look like that from a client point of view. So that's what we're going to, to, to uh, look at um, here. And we also um, see, first of all, how we can use instant messaging as kind of a new channel to uh, engage both uh, inside and outside the bank. And we also uh, are going to see how we can use a little bit of AI running behind the scenes, like uh, augmenting a, a conversation. So how did you build that? Basically, the core, uh, like the case and business process management stuff, that's what we've uh, what we seen this morning. That's the pure um, flowable uh, core engines uh, in the free open source that we looked at. But we built some um, commercial products on top of it, like flowable work and flowable engage in specific. That's what we call a commercial open source. So you need a license. At the end of the day, you also need to make some, some money to, to put back into free open source. But um, you still get access to the source code if you want to. So we've built a what we call a chat engine on top of the case and process and uh, uh, rule engine. And we can use chat uh, inside, like inside the, uh, the, the, the case management or process map, for instance. But we can also connect to the outside world. 
for instance, um, that uh, example that I'm going to show uses uh, external third-party messengers uh, that clients might use. So they don't even have to, to, to use a banking-specific uh, mobile app. They can use their existing WeChat clients, uh, WhatsApp client, Line, whatever they, whatever they want. But the cool thing is, inside, that all goes into one uh, place, right? No matter whether my client is using WhatsApp, the other one's using WeChat, uh, as, a, as a banking employee, I have one place that's in global, and then I can chat and communicate to my, uh, to my clients. Now, if you look at that from a more uh, technical point of view, the green parts are what, what you know from a uh, global open source, free open source. Then there's some uh, ex uh, additional stuff that we did as part of the commercial offering uh, global work, and even engage like the chat engine, uh, the integrations with the outside world using uh, WhatsApp, WeChat, Line, and so on, uh, and also the uh, the UI that I'm going to show in a, in a couple of minutes. So basically, we took the uh, the uh, open source engines and built some additional services uh, and engines on top of it. And whereas what we do behind the scenes, we uh, use chatbots to actually augment the conversation. Even if it looks like a human to human um, instant messaging or conversation, we still can do stuff behind the scenes like augmenting the communication, trying to find out uh, what we call intents, to then uh, kick off something like a change out this process. <coughs> That's actually my, uh, my example. If the chatbot thinks like, oh, they're talking about the client having moved to a new location, changing the address, uh, the chatbot might kick in and say, hey, do you, uh, I can start a case for you to actually bring in some more structure into the um, unstructured conversation. We can also run uh, structured questionnaires, KYC, that's a big topic in, in uh, banking nowadays, know your customer. You want to know and profile your customer. Uh, you probably want to do some small stuff like reminders, tasks, uh, out of a conversation. Sometimes you, you're communicating in an in a, uh, instant messaging conversation and um, how many times you forgot something. You, you pr uh, promise to say, oh yeah, I'm going to do that for you tomorrow or this uh, today. And then the conversation goes on and it's kind of lost. So that's why we built in um, chatbots that help you uh, create reminders, create small tasks, or even, as we will see, start a case or a process out of a conversation. It can even go as far as using um, natural language understanding or natural language processing um, that, and, and using uh, an AI framework behind the scenes, we're using Google the Pencil for that, um, to, to, to get intents out of natural language and then do something about it. And I think a really interesting part is we use case management kind of like uh, the, uh, I'd say the container behind the conversation. You don't feel it as a user but it's there and it's easy or helpful in terms of <coughs> auditing. So especially in the financial world, every single message needs to be audited inside of the bank. You need to be able to prove uh, back in time like how conversations went on. And um, again, bringing structure into an unstructured chat, uh, that's what we do in, uh, with the case engine and the process engine of global behind a conversation. Cool, that's already uh, enough intro, so I think it's, uh, it's time to, to see some, some actions. All right. So I'm just thinking, uh, given the, um, the talks we had around CMN or, or, or Claire, do you want the lights down to this? Yeah, yeah that's that probably a good idea. It's way better, right? Okay. So, let me ask a question. How many of you do know BPMN as a notation? Should be everyone. Totally. Cool. How many of you uh, know or at least have heard of CMN? Cool. How many actually used CMN? 
Not that many. Okay. Then I probably give you some some uh, insight into the modeling tool before we actually execute uh, uh, the demo, so we have a better picture of what's going on uh, when when I'm starting um, the the processes. So we will start with um, what we call client onboarding. So whenever before we can actually have a conversation with a client, you need to onboard that client into your system, right? And in the banking world, it's not an easy thing. You need to, to be compliant. You need to get the, the, the opt-in from the client that you can actually reach him through WhatsApp or WeChat, for instance. Um, maybe they need to sign a, a, a waiver. Uh, banks are always cautious of waiving out all the risks and put it to their clients. Um, but that, that all have, needs to happen actually before you can talk to, to your client. So I'm going to, to showcase that, uh, that first by probably just going into that um, case model. <coughs> so I'm using a, a flow design for um, that uh, CMN, basically. Um, I think that combination of both process, uh, BPMN and CMN, is, is a really natural good fit. I wouldn't say BPMN or CMN, right? I, I don't see a, a, a need to, to, to be set up from Am I going to use CMN to, to model my end-to-end process, or am I going to use BPMN? I think the combination is actually the, 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 the best way. Some of the processes might just pure be, you know, uh, talking driven, like you have your flow, you have ABC, and then it goes uh, through, like payment processing is one of those, uh, where you, you don't need CMN at all, you don't need case management, it's just a straight through process. But in a lot of cases, uh, especially in, in, in banking, um, in, the, in the front office processes, there's a lot of humans uh, interacting <coughs> in the process. There's not a lot of knowledge-driven pieces, let's say, of the process. And that's where the keys and uh, semen as a notation uh, come in hand. So I'm not going into the details. The only thing I want to mention here is that's not, uh, that's not a a demo example that's real world and it actually reflects the client onboarding on a third party messenger like WhatsApp, WeChat and so on. So first of all we, we, we map the, the, the stage or kind of the phase of, of, of a case into the state of, of our um, onboarding uh, between the client and, and the bank, right? It can be active which means I'm okay, I'm set up, I can talk to my client. might be inactive and inactive even has some called sub-stages, like if I might be non-boarding, which I'm, I'm still inactive, I, I'm not able to talk yet, but I'm, I'm going to onboard the client. It might end up being rejected or even blocked if the client tries to, to communicate to me as a bank that they don't uh, sign the waiver, they're not allowed to talk to me. For instance, I'm waiting on activation. If we use WhatsApp, we have the phone number as identification, that's fine. In WeChat, it's just a bloody big uh, 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 ID that we don't know who's behind that ID, and so on. The cool thing is, if you look at that from a case or from a high-level perspective, um, you can even explain that, okay, you can move from here to here, you can move from here to here. That's all visual. That's what CMN is all about, right? But it also gives you um, nice event listening stuff. What happens if a message comes in in this stage? What I'm going to do? <coughs> what, what's going on if I get a message uh, from, from, uh, from my client in this stage? What I'm going to do? That's really uh, nicely expressible in, in CMN. But if we look behind the scenes, let's say what the onboarding process looks like, it's just this one box, right? It's one box that says, hey, I'm going to initialize the whole communication in, if I drill down, by just opening the BPMN process, I use BPMN because it, it fits really nicely into that part. It's a regular BPMN process, but it's kind of orchestrated within the case at that certain moment where I'm entering the onboarding, hey, I want to kick off that process. So I kind of use the uh, case engine as an orchestration to kind of drive into uh, those we call process fragments. So we see here, I'm going to make a couple of uh, decisions according um, how we approach the, 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 the onboarding. Was it done because of an inbound message? Because of somebody um, triggered an action on, on, on a user? 
and it goes on and on until we have a live uh, communication between the client and, the, and its client advisor. That's what we use CMM for, kind of the overall orchestration. Right? But inside the boxes, we still use uh, regular EPMM processes to really drive um, those uh, actions, services, and user tasks. The nice, uh, again, the nice uh, thing here is in, in CMM, it's more like um, it's not that strict as on a process, you still have full control. You can say, but what, what can happen here, what can happen here? But typically, you give more flexibility to the users. Do you want to do A first and then B, or the opposite? In a strict process, you have to follow the design, right? In a case where all it's more like you have to do A and B at some point before you can move on to the next stage, but I don't care whether you do B first or, or A first. All right. So that's the um, that's the onboarding case. So let's do that step first, and then move on with the, um, the example that I actually wanted to show today. So I'm going to log in here as um, Shane Bowen. Shane Bowen uh, represents a client advisor inside the bank. So here we see um, the flowable uh, work and engage uh, standard UI. You see an inbox type of style of my conversations. I see that I talk to Jessica and Sunny, to Ben and Ella, whatever. Uh, that, that's regular chat, so you probably are familiar with that kind of thing. It's embeddable, you can embed it into an e-banking, you can embed it on your portal. We have clients running just the, the out-of-the-box UI. There's different ways. The cool thing is those that this inbox uh, is just one place. It doesn't matter whether my client actually uses WhatsApp, WeChat, or even my uh, the global client to, uh, to use uh, chat. On this end, I'm going to log in as a client. Her name is Annie Austin. As you can see, the inbox, the conversation inbox is empty because I didn't uh, do the onboarding yet. And that's what I'm going to do first. So that case that we just saw uh, in, in, uh, in the model, let me go uh, quickly go back here. Um, that's when I'm going to start to actually onboard my client to, to the messaging channel. So I'm going to do that. Typically, that's kicked off automatically if my client would send me a WhatsApp. Uh, then that kicks off uh, this case automatically. I'm, uh, for, the, for the demo, I'm going to do that um, manually by saying I want to start the uh, user account lifecycle. I'm going to, going to simulate the client using WhatsApp. And then here's my client ID. <coughs> I said I'm going to trigger the, 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 the onboarding And I'm going to set up a client client um, advice conversation. I could also use a desk, that's a more in retail. If you're a client in retail, you probably don't want to have a direct um, client advice or client relationship. It's more over a desk that you can talk to. In private banking, there's always a direct uh, communication. Um, so I'm going to start the case. You see the, the case, case representation in the, the stages that we saw in, in the CMM model. I also have uh, uh, one of the tasks that I need to, to fulfill as part of my onboarding process. That's now driven by the process engine, which was kicked off by the case engine as an orchestrator. Here I can decide, I see the incoming data from, from, uh, from WhatsApp and so on. I can say, I want to accept that new client. And because I already set it up as, as, a, as a client, I want to attach it to any else. I can uh, complete the review, and then the process uh, actually moves on. I can also look at it from a more task point of view. I was first now driving into the case, and I see the open tasks. But I can also go and use my task inbox. Right, so I have uh, here, it, it's the same pattern that we use, like the conversation inbox, it's the task inbox. You see all the tasks, the filter, you can search uh, for them. And now I have to select the client advisor 
that I want to connect to my client. That, that user class, that was uh, uh, created and driven by the process engine. Um, this is a huge uh, onboarding process that I was uh, showing uh, before. So I'm going to, sh to use Shane Bowen as the client advisor and then pay attention to the uh, upper, uh, upper world here. Now, as because I finished the onboarding of the client, the, the process automatically created the conversation out of that case. So basically, the case now became uh, the conversation container, and I sent uh, <coughs> a welcoming message to, to Annie Austin. Now we can actually, um, and of course, in my inbox, I should see that now too. I see Annie Austin connected to me as the client advisor, and we're now able to, to talk. I can say Shane that that's just pure chat right we even have all that uh, those uh, nice parts like typing indicators uh, it, it's real time we use uh, make heavy use of web sockets behind the scenes in a scalable way so we can uh, scale out to millions of uh, messages and, and, uh, and, and users but now the interesting part is, is it's not the chat itself. Now we want to bring in some, some structure, right? So what I'm going to do next is, let's assume they do some chit chat, and at some point Annie Austin mentions that she moved to a new location. And then let's see what happens. So I'm going to, to go here and say, Shane, by the way, I Russia. And as you can see um, behind the scenes, that was picked up by the chatbot augmenting the conversation and trying to, to, to find what we call intents uh, to figure out can I do something, can I provide some insight into the conversation. Normally, uh, or typically, that's done kind of, that's also what we call the digital assistant. It assists the client advisor. It doesn't replace it, right? It assists the client advisor. So instead of just as a client advisor saying, oh, address change, let me go into my call backing system and start the address change and whatever other system I need to do, um, that was exposed directly as a process into my conversation. Now, I don't even have to leave the conversation, right? That, that, uh, that's the cool stuff. So my process actually runs behind the scenes and, and uh, is uh, driving the digital assistant uh, to help me fulfill that address change. So it was also smart in the sense that it, um, it knows the context of the conversation, that the chatbot knows Shane Bowen is, 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 uh, has a profile as a digital, uh, uh, as a, sorry, as a um, client advisor, and the other person, Annie Austin, she has a profile of a client. So most likely you want to change the address of the client, right? You don't have to select it. The chatbot actually provides it for you as, as a suggestion. So I can only say um, yes for my client. By the way, sometimes uh, the AI stuff sometimes is a bit of magic. doesn't work all the time. So even if it's wrong, you can just tell the bot and say, hey, shut up, that, that was wrong. And then if you use machine learning, you can actually learn from that, uh, from that uh, experience. But now I want to actually really change the address of my client. <coughs> and here what we can do as well, we can actually blend in um, structured uh, things like using our embeddable form engine uh, for global forms uh, inside of conversation to actually add more structure to the um, uh, unstructured world of a, of, a, of a chat. And also reaching out um, to, to Annie Austin, we see that a message was posted like, hey, um, I, I got the intent that you, you changed the address. Um, let me uh, repeat what, what I currently hold in my system. We see that it was looking up through a service call, uh, the current address of uh, Annie Austin might be in a, in a, in a central CRM system, or back in the system, wherever, wherever that address was stored. And now, um, 
In private banking, most likely, clients don't like to fill out forms, don't, don't like to do repetitive stuff. They always hand that over to their client advisor. In retail, this would probably be reached out or, or sent to the, to the client directly, right? In private banking, it's the client advisor that actually takes in the data and, uh, and, and adds it to, to the process. So I still need the others, right? So I can still use uh, uh, what is then Andy Austin could then say um, it's directly on the red, uh, red square in Moscow to make it really interesting from a compliance point of view. Cool. I can now add it to, to my uh, form. So, uh, I don't know, it's in code. Russia. Then I can submit uh, that new address. And of course, maybe I was uh, misspelling it, so I, the, the digital assistant still asks me, is that, is that okay? Repeats um, the current address. I see the current address in here as well. The new one, and I want to, to, uh, to confirm. And then we also want to reach out to the client to, to actually uh, make a confirmation. Um, so the client doesn't need to enter the address, just, you know, uh, that was done by the client advisor, but still we, we want confirmation from a legal point of view to, to see, hey, that's really your new, new address you're moving to. Just to give you an example, you can also blend in third-party content, like Google Maps in, in my example. So I see uh, the, the address that I entered just um, inside of, of um, Google Maps. I don't know if it's the right one. Yeah, probably it is. And I can then say yes or no, that's fine. Can I ask a question? Sure. So if you integrate with WhatsApp, yep. so is the client using WhatsApp yep. to receive those messages? How can they press those buttons? Really good question. <laughs> Glad you asked. Um, that's what we do behind the scenes. We, 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 uh, we have to, to know the capabilities of the end client that, we, that the client uh, is using, right? <coughs> If the client has now is using our client, we can use way more than you can use in WhatsApp or WeChat. If you would see that in WhatsApp, we would use a location message for that part. And we, uh, so here is just pure Google Maps. In, in WhatsApp, it would, it would translate into a location message. And instead of, of a rendering button, because you can't do that in WhatsApp, you can do in Facebook Messenger, by the way. In Facebook Messenger, you see buttons. In WhatsApp, we just uh, place, hey, Please make a decision, type in yes or no, and then we use that interface to drive the process. And just, uh, yeah, as you mentioned it, it, in a banking world, it even goes down to emojis. So for instance, we had a huge uh, problem with uh, the regulator, because on WeChat, they have a specific set of emojis that do not match the ones on WhatsApp or what we have, right? So we had to do translation be between emojis, because otherwise, inside of the bank, in the audit trail, you would see a question mark instead of the thumbs up emoji, for instance, right? Which is, from a legal point of view, dangerous, because what did the customer actually send you? Yeah. So in a banking world, it's not as easy as it seems. Cool, uh, let's continue. So I'm going to confirm the, um, the address change. So we have all the information right now. So we, we, we sent the message to the client. Hey, for now, I have all the information. If I need more, I ping you on this channel. You might even uh, be able to upload documents or take a picture of your, I don't know, um, tax uh, papers or whatever is needed for the move. Uh, you can use the same channel, obviously. Internally, however, we, um, we placed a message like, uh, Russia is a sensitive country due to regulations. It's not something we can just uh, allow a move that easily. So we have to hand that case over to compliance. Now again, we are happy that we actually run a case behind the scenes because now we have to involve a compliance officer. So let me um, do that by logging in as Tim Lee. Timmy is a compliance officer working inside of the bank. He's not a structured guy. He probably doesn't like 
real world, uh, real time uh, chat communications. So he, he uses the task app, uh, or the work app of um, global work. He has the inbox of all the tasks he need to do. He need to reduce uh, cases, uh, work check data, whatever. And we see on top, we have to review the history of our client, Danny Austin, who's about to move to, to a sensitive country, because we have to, to, to look at it from a compliance point of view. We see, um, <coughs> here we see, because now, now we have a real advantage, because behind the conversation, we have the case uh, that drives the, the communication and that's why we can use all the collected information, like the old address, the new address. We have all that information as part of our case, although it is entered as part of the conversation. Now we have even um, data coming from, typically from a poor banking system, the profile of our client, assets they hold, which drives the, the, the decision. This part is actually not really real world. It's, it's way more complex in, in the real world scenario, but it, we're talking about the um, Technology here, not the, the real world example. So I can review as as uh, as Tim Lee, as the compliance officer, and then I can say I want uh, uh, accept is is the move accepted of client, uh, uh, any Austin, or do we have to actually deny because we are not allowed to continue the relationship? So in my case, I'm going to accept it, and as you can see, we directly posted that, um, that information through the digital assistant back to, the, uh, to that uh, instant messaging channel. Which means we use instant messaging connected to the um, process and case engines and can easily drive uh, communication over that channel in, in, uh, in both directions, obviously. Now, uh, yeah. can I ask another question? Sure. It's always related to WhatsApp. Are you inserting the digital assistant inside the conversation? Yeah, but, but only inside of Flowboot. WhatsApp doesn't even know. Okay, yeah. So on WhatsApp, if I'm chatting with the bank, yeah. does it come up that my actually my... Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's pretty, from a rendering point, it's pretty similar like in a group chat. Okay. So you yeah. see this message was posted by the digital assistant. You okay, see so it's a group chat. Not exactly. Actual exactly. Group chat. Okay. exactly. And you see, okay, this message was Shane Bowen, or this message yeah. was uh, the digital assistant, yeah. you see that. Yeah, but of course it doesn't say this message is only digital. No, because, uh, because we can't do that yes. in WhatsApp, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, I think the interesting part is, how was that? Uh, let's, let's look behind the scenes how we use um, the um, case and process engine or, or modeling so I can actually do that. So I'm going back to flow design. And then uh, use the address change process. So in, in this uh, this part of of uh, the sample, so the first part, the onboarding part, because it's, it's quite complex and a lot of different combined use cases, but the CMN based approach was, was a really good fit. Now for the address change, I don't need this flexibility. A pure EPMM process is, is, uh, is more than enough, right? So for the address change, I still use the case uh, behind the conversation, but I just started that process as part of the conversation. And here, it, it's just a regular process, right? So for instance, um, let me go into this part. That was the form that I posted inside the conversation. So I used um, the form designer, I added the uh, address field, uh, zip code, city, country, and that was, uh, it, it, it's basically from a process point of view, it's just a regular human task, but, and oh, I forgot to, to show that, because we, we would all, uh, also have set, uh, seen that task inside of, um, of my task app. So I can choose whether I want to complete the task as part of my task inbox or within the conversation where I have all the context. Maybe I'm starting the, 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 the move again and then uh, let, let's see um, how that uh, looks like. We can also send messages to a conversation by just um, drag and drop, um, like send message uh, service pass or create a new conversation as part of a process. That's how we connect those worlds. 
we have a couple of other mocks and service tasks uh, that we can use as part of, of modeling of a process or, or uh, of a case. And at the end here, for instance, um, that's also probably a, a nice part. We use um, DMN to drive um, the decision whether we have a, uh, a sensitive country. Again, it's a simplified one. It's just based on old country, new country. Uh, if it's the same, like if all the new countries are the same, we accept, we don't even need compliance. If it's one of the sensitive ones, like China, Russia, Europe, Ukraine, we go into uh, compliance needed. Um, and for everything else, we, we, uh, we accept. So let me start that again to show you the uh, completed tasks. It will be still be there. Yeah, but it's nice if it's the yeah. oh, well, in the box, it should be right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. sure, let's go. Yeah, exactly. Here in my task list, if I go to my completed task that I completed, I see uh, the, the, it's, it's a regular user task that, um, that was uh, created by the process engine, just exposed into the conversation. Can I also see the element of it? Oh, yeah. If I go into the, um, into the history of my process or case, I see all the audit. That's the cool stuff around um, combining the structured world, like in a process or case, into a conversation. I get uh, for free. I get all that history um, that we also learned uh, this morning how, how that works uh, in, for the audit trail. And I can even go and um, and, and I can even go and see uh, decisions being executed. Hopefully, yeah. So here we have um, the execution view of, of the decision table. We see the input, like Germany to Russia. We see um, the rules that finally got a hit, right? We said, okay, if the new uh, country is Russia, we need compliance. Yes? So this, uh, I assume, is coming from the uh, get the name of the table, but basically the, it, it, it logs all, at least for processes, it logs all the nodes that you've gone through. Yeah. Um, yeah. In a uh, flow build that has the case management built in, is that all saved to the same table, like all of those nodes, or do you have no. to get that from different? So um, I think that that's uh, one of the, I would say, major USPs of the core engines. The case engine is completely something different than a process engine. And, and the, the, uh, uh, the senior tables also... Exactly. The they, they have their own very specific execution um, tables in the database. Because the case state is something totally different. You cannot store it as a an, as an process execution. You know what I mean? That's why they have their own uh, separate tables. But there's um, resting points that actually give you uh, that data, uh, in a, even in a combined way. Okay. Especially if you use um, one of the commercial products like Platform, we expose all that uh, history. We use the async uh, history mechanism, and we uh, publish it to uh, Elasticsearch. And there you can combine it, you can run analytics on both uh, the execution. I think also from a um, for, for developers or modelers, uh, views like that is really uh, come in handy so you can really see what data uh, did, I, did I use um, and uh, was actually driving uh, my case and my process. All right, so let me go back quickly to, to the um, process. Yeah, so here we have the, um, the DMN table executed to, to find out are we moving into sensitive country and if yes, uh, we need to involve um, compliance. That's the compliance lane uh, here. So we have the client block. Whatever you uh, put in here, it's going to be exposed or talking to the client. We have the client advisor. And we have the, the uh, compliance officer that down here. And if we have the approval by the, the compliance officer, we actually 
change the address in the system. That's a regular service task that actually writes back the, the new address. Because until this point in time, we just keep the new address data as part of the case, right? Or the process. And at this point, if we got the approval, everything's okay, we, we write it back to the um, third party um, uh, system. And then we, we send the success message to the conversation, like, hey, all's good, all's fine. Um, so at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's not magic, right? It's just a regular um, process that runs behind the scenes. And we use instant messaging as a new way <coughs> of communication. Can the customer use more than one channel, like in the one sentence Skype, for example, or something like that? Or you yeah. they only on one? No, they, they can use, uh, from a technical point of view, we can, you, you can even choose if you want uh, inside if you want one communication, one conversation, I will be exposed to both channels like uh, WhatsApp, uh, Skype, whatever. Or if those are two different communications handled inside, and then you don't see on WhatsApp what you see on Skype and vice versa. And what about group communication? Yeah, of course you can do that as well. So uh, here my, uh, I think I probably have one of those as well. Yeah, here I have a group of different people uh, we have support for um, <coughs> for channels, uh, so you can add a, a, a people to a channel. You can subscribe to a channel and, and, and watch uh, messages in there. There's group communication, uh, one to ones. So this and so on. The, are these conversations in all in all your implementations saved as part of a case? Not necessarily. Um, so so the the container in this case is a case for the conversation, but do you have like a separate tables for your conversation? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We, like like with all the engines in uh, Flow, the uh, the uh, chat engine is no different. It uses its own um, stored uh, uh, and, and tables in, in the backend. So because it's again really specific, but. Uh, on the integration part, it, it's uh, if, if you if you use a case to drive the conversation behind the scenes, they are obviously linked together the same thing. But so that that's why you can also have conversation without a case at all. If you just use internal group conversation, you don't need a case. Cool. All right. So that's it. <laughs> Very close, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, maybe there are. Do we have time for. Yeah, we've got some time for some questions. questions yeah. Some more questions. Yeah? How, how's the, the bot thing going? Maybe, uh, which part? The structure or the AI bot? The AI bot. The AI bot. We actually use TensorFlow, Google TensorFlow behind the scenes. So we, we basically feed in the whole data of the conversation into TensorFlow and we get uh, so-called intents out of it. And if we find uh, a certain percentage um, of the intent, uh, like that, then we can uh, trigger any type of action. And it's a, it's a framework, so it's an API at the end of the day. In my case, uh, the end intent was uh, like, oh, um, address change. And then I used the API to, to then kick off the process. We've also done proof of concept with the, that NLP. Yeah, yeah, we have. I think the interesting part is not um, the AI chatbot or the structured digital assistant that, that we were just uh, seeing, or the humans. I think the, the, the biggest USP is in the combination. So we had one um, bank uh, doing a prototype that we used the AI bot in retail. You could ask questions like, show me my, my latest payments, give me details, whatever. So that chatbot was trained, you obviously have to train it, right? It was trained to answer a certain amount of questions, typical retail questions. And depending on the intent, it would do uh, different stuff. Like if we get the intent of an address change, we hand over from the AI chatbot to the process chatbot. Although from a client point of view, it's, it looks the same, right? But technology-wise, it was driven by a different technology. And even that AI bot was able to hand over to a human-driven desk if the question could not be answered. So then it would ask you, hey, I cannot answer that question. Should I move you to the help desk? And then it will pop up in, in their um, inbox. And we, we use that open source library for that. Browser, yeah. We use the browser, the TensorFlow, and uh, something else. 
uh, that's the that's one of the main thing. But it's it's all coming down on how good you train your chatbot because sometimes it would react really weird. Like I was asking a question, they would say, "Hello, good day." Said, what? <coughs> yeah. Could you have a, a group chat uh, across different? Services so two people are using WeChat. One is using WhatsApp. One is using the built-in. Yeah. And and how would the people who are not in that group chat on let's say uh, WhatsApp know what people are saying in that are using the, the other like how do they get notified of those people's messages? So basically, you can think of um, the global chat engine. That's where. Everything happens, right? So each message, whether it's an inbound message from WhatsApp, which or whatever, goes into that chat engine, even if you type internally using the uh, global uh, client. Right? And the um, delivering that's a separated um, component called message deliverer, and they're depending on the participants and what they use as channel. Uh, they deliver the messages in different ways. So if I post a message in a conversation. And one participant on WhatsApp and one on WeChat. The WeChat um, adapter takes up that message for that one participant, sends it. The same message gets picked up by the WhatsApp adapter and sends it uh, to the uh, WhatsApp client. So yeah. at the end of the day, but everyone question, receives the message. My question is more about if someone that's on WhatsApp posts a message, how does the person on WeChat see that message? Like how? Because <coughs> there's no participant in that group there that can. Say no, that word. It's still, what I mean. it still goes uh, through but the uh, it, global is chat Is the digital engine. assistant just echoing what the other person is saying, or how? No, we we uh, we basically um, on on uh, on WeChat. Um, well, let us start on WhatsApp. On WhatsApp, we use. I'm just wondering if that's a coffee time conversation. Okay. So we can back. Yeah, if, let, if let's you don't mind, because I think that's the, there's a long that's a yeah, long yeah, answer. That's, that's all. Yeah. So no, great. Thanks very much.